Heels back, the chair is recognized. Mr. Hur, why'd he do it? Why did Joe Biden, in your words, willfully retain and disclose classified materials? I mean, he knew the law. Been in office like 50 years. Five decades in the United States Senate, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, eight years as vice president. He got briefed every day as vice president. He's been in the situation room. In fact, you know he knew the rules because you said so on page 226. President Biden was deeply familiar with the measures taken to safeguard classified documents. And Joe Biden told us he knew the rules. Mr. Armstrong said this earlier. Joe Biden was deeply familiar with it. You're exactly right, because he told us when Jack Smith goes after President Trump, Joe Biden says, how could this happen? What data was in those documents that could compromise sources and methods? It's irresponsible. So Joe Biden knew the rules. You know he knew the rules. And Joe Biden told us he knew the rules. So Mr. Hur, why did he break them? Congressman, the conclusion uh, as to exactly why uh, the president did what he did is not one that we explicitly address in the report. The report explains my decision uh, to the attorney general that no criminal charges were warranted in this manner. I think you did tell us. I think you told us, Mr. Hur. Page 231, you said this. President Biden had strong motivations. That's a key word. We're getting to motive now. President Biden had strong motivations to ignore the proper procedures for safeguarding the classified information in his notebooks. Why did he have strong motivations? Because, next word, because he decided months before leaving office to write a book. To write a book, that was his motive. He knew the rules, he broke them because he was writing a book. And you further say, and he began meeting with the ghostwriter while he was still vice president. There's the motive. Mr. Hur, how much did President Biden get paid for his book? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if that information appears in the report. It sure does. There's a dollar amount in there. You remember? Uh, I don't, it, it may be eight million. If eight that's million added. dollars. Joe Biden had eight million reasons to break the rules. Took classified information and shared it with the guy who was writing the book. That's why he did. He knew the rules, but he broke them for $8 million in a book advance. But you know what? It wasn't just the money. Joe Biden, here's this, this page 231, very next page. Joe Biden, in your report, Joe Biden viewed his notebooks as an irreplaceable, contemporaneous record of the most important moments of his vice presidency. He had written this all down for the book, for the $8 million. And the next thing you say in your report is, quote, such a record would buttress his legacy as a world leader. You know what this is? It wasn't just the money. It wasn't just $8 million. It was also his ego. Pride and money is why he knowingly violated the rules. The oldest motives in the book, pride and money. You agree with that, Mr. Hur? You wrote it in your report. That language and it does appear in the report, and we did identify evidence supporting those, uh, those assessments. You also had another interesting statement in your report. You said Joe Biden, I want to make sure I get this right, viewed himself as a man of presidential timber. Remember that statement, Mr. Hur? I believe that does appear in the report, at least in the executive summary. I think this is interesting, because here's the scary part. Page 200. I said this earlier in my opening statement. Page 200, Joe Biden. This is a quote, Joe Biden risked serious damage to America's national security when he shared information with his ghostwriter. Shared it with his ghostwriter, the guy who was helping Joe Biden get $8 million. And oh, by the way, Mr. Hur, what did that ghostwriter do with the information Joe Biden shared with him on his laptop? What did he do after you were named special counsel? Chairman, if you're referring to the audio recordings that Mr. Zwanitzer created of his conversations with exactly Biden, what I'm referring to. He, he, uh, he slid, if I remember correctly, uh, he slid those files into his uh, recycle bin on his computer. Tried to, tried to destroy the evidence, didn't he? Correct. The very guy who was helping Joe Biden get the $8 million, the $8 million Joe Biden had used, w w the motive for Joe Biden to to disclose classified information, to retain classified information, which he definitely knew was against the law. When you get named special counsel, what's that guy do? He destroys the evidence. 
That's the key takeaway in my mind. That's the key takeaway. I yield back. Mr. Hurd, during your one-year investigation, did you have communications with the White House and the White House Counsel in, in particular? Yes. I think you had like, I, I got five letters that they, uh, in, in, and they communicated with you regarding your investigation. Is that accurate? We received a number of letters from uh, White House Counsel's office and as well as the President's personal counsel. Right. They're either special counsel or, or personal counsel, I see, the, who signed the letters. And did the White House get the report before the report was made public? We did provide a draft of the report to the White House Counsel's Office and members of the President's personal counsel team for their re review. No, I understand. And did the White House then, once they got the report before it went public, did the White House try to weigh in with, with your investigation on elements of that report and, frankly, get the report changed? They did request certain edits and changes to the draft report. Yeah, I see that in the, in the February 5th letter. Did they only correspond with you? I'm sorry, Congressman, are you, are you asking if they, Congress, if they corresponded with anyone else once, on my team? Once you gave the report to the White House, yes. they, tried to, they saw changes. I have one letter here that's addressed to you on February 5th, and they said, we're pleased that after more of a year of investigating, you've determined, you know, they, 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 they respond to the report. And then they, they ask, they, they disagree with your, uh, they ask for you to change some of the things you had in your report, namely the fact that the president's uh, memory was uh, not very good. You remember that? Yes, sir. Okay, but I also have two other letters, one on February 7th to Merrick Garland, where they raise the same concern, and then on February 12th, where they go to the DAG, Bradley Weis uh, Weinsheimer. You familiar with those? Uh, I am familiar with those letters. Bradley Weinsheimer is an assistant uh, or associate deputy attorney general. Right, associate DAG, the ADAG, right? Yes. And Merrick Garland, of course, is the attorney general. So yes, you're familiar with the fact that they went over your head? Um. They were certainly entitled to write whatever letters they wished to Mr. Weinsheimer and to the Attorney General. I just find that interesting. You know, the White House is, they're communicating with you throughout this one-year investigation, and then the White House says, oh, we're going we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to the principal's office, and we're going we're gonna to talk about Mr. Hur's report. Do you find that interesting? Uh, as I said, they, they were free to correspond with whomever in the federal government they wished to correspond with. Um, I, I did engage in numerous communications with them during the course of the uh, investigation, and as is reflected in the special counsel regulations, the attorney general did provide oversight of my investigation. I understand. Uh, I thank the gentlelady for yielding. And uh, the gentleman from South Carolina is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I yield to you such time as you may consume, sir. Oh, I, I appreciate the gentleman yielding. Uh, Mr. Hur, why did why did the White House go? Why did the White House lawyers go look in the first place? My understanding is they went to the Penn Biden Center. Why did they go look in the first place? My I mean, look for classified, you know, mishandling of classified, look for classified documents. Why did they do it? What we identified uh, through our investigation was that um, at a certain date, members of uh, the president's staff went to the Penn Biden Center in order to get a better handle on what the information, what kinds of evidence and uh, what, what kinds of materials were at the Penn Biden Center. Were they specifically looking for potential uh, documents that were classified or was it a broader initial look? My understanding is that it was a broader initial look, and I'm looking at chapter 14, page 257 of my report about um, a visit in right. March 2021 right. to Penn Biden Center. Okay. Uh, in March? In March of 2021. And was this after the uh, Justice Department began their investigation into President Trump? I confess I don't have the date of the beginning of the investigation into President Trump at hand, Chairman. I believe it was the same month. I mean, I believe it was after, uh, so I was just, just, just curious to that. Now, one other thing I think is important for folks to understand is President Biden had this information everywhere. I mean, you, you said they initially went to the Penn Biden Center. Which location was it at? Do you remember when they initially did their look? Was it at the transition office? Was it at the temporary Penn Biden Center in Chinatown? Or was that at its current location? where the Penn Biden Center uh, currently sits here in uh, our, our, you know, final location, I guess, in D.C. Do you remember? I believe the visit that I referenced in March 2021 that's described on page 257 was to the Penn, ben, Penn Biden Center's uh, permanent and current location. Permanent and current. So there were three places, those three places, classified information were, was at. Is that fair to say? That's correct. The initial transition office immediately after the end of the vice presidency, the Penn Biden Center's temporary office, and then the Penn Biden Center's permanent office. Okay. So those, and then you had the University of Delaware Library, the University of Delaware Biden Center, right? So that's five total. And then you had multiple places in his home. Correct. The garage, the den, the office upstairs, and the office downstairs. Correct. So what is that? That's like nine different places. 
I've lost count, sir, but yeah, that exactly. sounds, that sounds it's right. A, there, it's everywhere. And it was documents over a 50-year time frame. And then by comparison, because the Democrats want to keep comparing to President, President Trump's classified document right at his home with Secret Service protection. I don't know that they're anywhere else, were they? Uh, I, I'm not aware of other locations, President. Yeah. I think that, I think. <laughs>